Okay, so here is my PlayStation 2022 wrap-up. Uh, let's have a look and see what kind of numbers we've got. Total playtime. Start there. So 647 total hours in 2022. I feel like that's incredibly low. I'm not too sure. I did this like in 2020 and I feel like it was a lot higher than just 647. How many, how many days is that roughly? So that's roughly just under 27 days of um, game time, which is pretty low, if I'm being honest. I think this year is probably my lowest for gaming ever in, in any year since maybe like 2008. <laughs> uh, so 645 hours played locally, two hours played online. I don't really understand why there's only two hours online, because obviously I've played a lot more than just two hours online. Um, maybe that's just like a bug with the statistics. Uh, total amount of days played, so 186, uh, 183 rather, that's basically half of the year, so I guess that's rather impressive. Uh, let's go back to the dashboard. Top games, let's have a look at that. So I played 19 games in 2022, again probably the lowest total that I've ever played. Um, generally I'm always over 20, but 19 still isn't too bad. Top five, so we have Yu-Gi-Oh! and Master Duel. So right, this year I kind of got back into Yu-Gi-Oh! A lot of that was just grinding for the Platinum, to be honest, and probably a fair bit of AFK time in there as well. But yeah, interesting to see that that's my most played game. 181 hours logged, not too shabby. Overwatch 2, 133 hours. So considering Overwatch 2 only came out like a few months ago, that's quite a substantial amount of time. Next we have Prey, 43 hours. Um, I platinum this game in like the first week of the year, so 43 hours across uh, a single week is, is rather insane. Assassin's Creed Unity, another game that I platinumed. Um, I had like all of the, the multiplayer slash co-op trophies from many, many years ago, and then I, I purchased the game and went back and finished the single player. And then Darksiders, 40 hours to get the platinum for that one. So yeah, quite interesting to see like what my most played games were but no real surprises here because these are just like the games that took the longest to to platinum and didn't really play any multiplayer games besides overwatch 2. uh trophies earned let's have a look at that one i am a trophy hunter so it'd be interesting to have a look 471 new trophies honestly a pretty pretty disappointing year a pretty low year uh, anything under 500 is pretty terrible all right let's see how many platinum trophies we got eight so eight is terrible um I usually try and aim for like at least 15, so to only get 8 Platinum Trophies for the year definitely shows that 2022 was a rough gaming year for myself. But yeah, so that was my wrap up for 2022, definitely like one of my worst years in gaming ever for time, I just had a busy year and I didn't really have time for games, but that being said, still managed to pump out some hours, still managed to get some Platinum Trophies, and still managed to have some fun. Now if you haven't seen this website before, it's called PSN Profiles. So if you have a PlayStation account, um, you can simply make an account on this and it'll basically show you all of your like trophy progress, but it's also useful for just showing what kind of games I've played. The focus of this isn't necessarily going to be on the trophies that I earned, even though I am a trophy hunter, I'm also just going to be focused on the games I played this year. So scrolling down to the beginning of the year, the first game that I played was Prey. Now, I think I started Prey on like the 1st of January and finished it on the 7th. So as you can see, like I platinumed it in uh, one week, nine hours, which is pretty impressive because I think it's like a 45 hour platinum. And yeah, Prey is right up there with one of the best games I've ever played. I absolutely fell in love with it. I played it at a time where I was kind of like losing my passion for gaming a little bit. Like, it'd, be, it'd been a while since I'd had, like, one of those gaming experiences that really, like, reinvigorated my my love of, of, of gaming. Because sometimes I can kind of get bogged down with, like, trophy hunting or not really having enough time and kind of just going through the motions when playing games. But Prey was definitely that game that really, really stood out to me as, as something that I really, really loved. And, yeah honestly like one of the best games i've ever played i really like that immersive sim genre it's a uh, super fun great story great gameplay um playing it on the hardest difficulty was a ton of fun as well and yeah probably the best game that i played the entire year and it just so happened to be the first game i played uh next is middle earth shadow of war the follow-up of 
uh, Shadow of Mordor. I enjoyed Shadow of Mordor, so I thought I would enjoy this one, and honestly it wasn't too bad. It was a bit grindy, um, I did platinum it in five days, I was a bit of a madman at the beginning of the year, but it's fine, like, I enjoy the, the combat, but honestly, like, it does get bogged down a little bit, especially, like, towards the end, it was, it was quite grindy getting those last few trophies, but, like, the gameplay is fun, the story's okay, I'm not the biggest fan of, like, Lord of the Rings lore, it doesn't overly appeal to me, it's fine, it's, it's not anything special. Um, but yeah, the game's fun. The game, the game was a, a, a fun open world experience, but nothing overly special. Next we have Assassin's Creed Unity. So as you can see, five years, three months from getting the first trophy to the last. I actually played this with a friend and, and helped him get all of the co-op trophies, obviously five years ago. And then I, I returned to the game this year and uh, finished like the campaign. I think I played like the first third, picked up where I left off, finished it. Honestly, like... Unity is one of those games that like got a really bad uh, rap because of how terrible the the first few months were. But once they ironed out all of the bugs, like I didn't really have any problems with that. But I'm not a big fan of the Assassin's Creed games. Like anything beyond Assassin's Creed Three is is a, a little average for me. And even then, like Three isn't that great either. But I enjoy them for what they are. But I do kind of get sick of them. Uh, Unity was definitely a bit of a grind towards the end. But overall, like. A pretty fun experience. Life is Strange 2, so the follow-up to Life is Strange. Life is Strange is one of my favorite games and I am a huge fan of this style of game, like the, the multiple choice telltale type games. And uh, Life is Strange 2 was was just okay. It was it was fine. I kind of picked it up more so for the Platinum uh, more than anything. I w was expecting something a little bit better, but look, it'd been so long since I played that type of game. It was just nice to to play like something that was nice and chilled and, and laid back. The story was okay, the characters were pretty solid. I just think that these games uh, in general kind of can always do a bit more than they actually deliver and that was part of a problem for me. But Life is Strange 2, like I definitely recommend it if you've played like the first one and enjoyed it. If you like that like style and genre of game, you'll probably like this one, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, next we have Battlefield 5, I think that was the PlayStation Plus game. Um, I played it with the intentions of platinuming it, however I kind of got busy at some point and then just put it put it down and, and never got back to it. Look, it's it's okay. Look, the Battlefield games haven't really been that good in recent. I'm a huge fan of like uh, Bad Company 2's multiplayer and Battlefield 3 had a pretty solid multiplayer, but after that it's been kind of downhill. And I do enjoy playing like the Battlefield games from time to time, but honestly in general just multiplayer games I've kind of outgrown a little bit. Next, The Evil Within. So I actually played The Evil Within on PS3. I played it for about an hour and then I gave up on it. There was just something about it that I don't know, I couldn't get into whatsoever. And then a few years later, like this year, at the beginning of this year, I uh, picked it up on PS4 and went back and played it and honestly had a pretty good time. Uh, it's definitely a game I wouldn't try and platinum, a bit too hard for me, but uh, I like survival horror games. I like games where you have to manage resources and it was a ton of fun. It was a bit different to like some of the Resi games. It, it had its own kind of thing going on. Um, I enjoyed the story here a lot. I think the, the first hour is kind of mediocre but once you kind of get into it and learn like the the gameplay loop it becomes a lot more enjoyable so evil within was it was a fun game for sure uh next Yu-Gi-Oh master duel so i 100 percented it no platinum trophy unfortunately uh this year i kind of got back into Yu-Gi-Oh. i was a big fan of Yu-Gi-Oh when i was like growing up when i was younger and then once I kind of got into high school, fell out of it a little bit, and then this year, for whatever reason, started getting into it. I watched a fair bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, content on YouTube as well, so I think that kind of helped. I had some fun, and I think it was actually my most played game this year. Next up, The Evil Within 2. Actually a really solid sequel. I, I wasn't too sure what to expect with this one, but honestly, like, this game was incredible. Um, really, really enjoyed it from start to finish. It was scary, it had a, like a, such a cool atmosphere felt a lot different to the first game, felt like a sequel, it made improvements across the board and was, was really fun, I enjoyed the ending of that one too. And then also in March I played Far Cry Primal, so platinum it in about three weeks which is not too shabby and uh, you can see like I, I started off the year like quite well, like I've, I've got through quite a few games and we're only in March and uh, Far Cry Primal was just fine. It's a Far Cry game, you know what to expect, the gameplay loop's very similar. The, the shtick here is that your weapons are like spears and bow and arrow and that kind of thing and, and that aspect was cool but honestly like it, after it wears off after like the first 10 hours it does become a bit of a grind and I wasn't really a fan of like the story here but it was cool. It 
was something different, a bit different to like your typical military focused uh, Far Cry game. So it was worth playing, I would say. And then also in March, I played Firewatch, which is a, a cool little indie. Thoroughly enjoyed this one. Very beautiful, nice change of pace, cool story. 100% of it. it was nice and nice and quick. Only seven hours to, to get all of the trophies. Had an enjoyable experience. I'd definitely recommend that one if you're a fan of indies. And then next we have the uh, PlayStation Plus game SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Now, I never played this game, like, this is a remaster. I never played the original back in, like, I think it was like PS2 era maybe. Never, never played it. It's just like a really simple, fun platformer. Obviously made for kids, so it's, it's nothing too challenging here. And these kinds of games I really enjoy. Like, just simple platformers where you can turn your brain off. Ton of fun to platinum. Nice and short. Had a had a fun time with that one. And then next, I played Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm. I actually got like the the trilogy. Um, actually, I think I got four of them. I think there's a fourth one as well. And I picked all of them up. Started with the first one, obviously, and just honestly couldn't get into it. I'm not a big fan of fighting games. It's probably the one genre that I dislike the most or have played the least. And I tried to give this one a, sh a shot, but honestly, I just can't be bothered like learning all of the, the different movesets and stuff. There's no real like story to latch onto or open world kind of aspect to it. And yeah, it's like, I'll probably return to it someday, but I don't see myself going back to it anytime soon. And then in June, I played Doom Eternal. So I was a huge fan of Doom 2016. Absolutely loved the gameplay for it. So I played this one with high expectations and it delivered. It was absolutely sick. Such a fun experience. I uh, didn't go for the platinum trophy for this one. Just wanted to focus on enjoying the game. Had a, had a really good time with it. Like absolutely sick gameplay. Love the score. It's just such a fun like first person shooter experience and really, really highly addicting as well. Also in June, I played Hitman, so uh, the first of the, the Hitman games, I had played Hitman Absolution on PS3 before and, and really enjoyed it. This is a bit different because it's more so like level-based, less of a story. Uh, look, they're fine, they're fun, I like the missions, they're creative, and I do respect this type of gameplay, but I'm just not a huge fan of stealth games, in all honesty. And I think for these games, you they really reward like multiple playthroughs. I only played through each mission once. So it's not really like a fair assessment of the game. But yeah, like it's cool, it's fun, it's something different to what I'm used to. And I'd recommend playing them if you like that kind of like open world sandbox type style uh, stealth games where each of the missions are kind of like you have so much variety. Really fun. And we can see like there's a huge gap between Hitman and The Walking Dead. Like June uh, 16th was like the last trophy I earned in Hitman. And then there was like nothing until September. Keep in mind that these dates are like the time where I earned the last trophy. Like as you can see, it took me three months to get through Darksiders. But uh, The Walking Dead, the final season. Look, I played all, all of the other seasons of The Walking Dead. Um, really big fan of the first season. Season two is okay as well. Didn't like um, The Lost Frontier or whatever it was called. And, and The Walking Dead Michonne was also pretty trash. But uh, decided to pick this one up and, and see it through since it was Telltale's last game. And it was just okay. Look, uh, easy platinum, but there were aspects of it that were pretty cool. But overall, it was it was pretty disappointing. And I think just in general, like Telltale kind of fell off in those last few years as well. But as I said um, earlier with Life is Strange 2, I'm a big fan of this type of genre and this type of game. And look, I, ha I had fun playing with it. And it was kind of cool to, to finish off that series. And then also Darksiders, which I completed in the beginning of October. It took me three months to get through. I got super busy um, at this point of the year and, and kind of had to set the game aside. Uh, look, it was, it was fine. It was fun. Story was pretty cool, nice and simple. I enjoyed Mark Hamill's voice acting. The The combat's kind of like different to games that I usually play, so it was nice and from that aspect to get something like that. And I enjoyed the gameplay. It was a bit of a slog getting the platinum, like a, a few of the trophies were quite grindy towards the end, but overall I, I had fun playing that one. And Overwatch 2, which actually combines its uh, trophy list with Overwatch 1, um, like most of these trophies are obviously from Overwatch 1. I did have it 100 percented before Overwatch 2 came out. Obviously all of the new heroes have their own trophies which I haven't got yet. Some of them are quite difficult and I don't think I can get without boosting. But uh, this is like the final game of the year that I that I played. As you can see like basically the second half of the year is just void of new games because I just simply haven't had time. I've had to prioritize other aspects of my life, other hobbies um, such as like watching movies and TV shows or watching sport they kind of took precedent over over gaming as you can see like it was just a lean <laughs> lean second half of the year but i'm hoping to get back into it and get back into the swing of things overwatch 2 by the way has been uh, fantastic so far unfortunately like they kind of abandoned overwatch 1 for ages and i quit the game for 
maybe 18 months, two years, but uh, like a lot of people, I return to Overwatch 2, and it's still something I play like every week now. So uh, heading into 2023, you can see that I just started playing Mass Effect, the Mass Effect trilogy I've played before, and honestly, they're three of my favorite games ever, especially the first two, and I'm looking to go through and Platinum all three. So that's what I'll be playing at the beginning of 2023, the end of 2022, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. And yeah, that was what I played in 2022. I'd like to hear what kind of games you guys played. As you can see, like not too many games that actually came out in 2022. It's more so catching up on like older games that I have. Nothing overly crazy. Probably like the worst year I've had for gaming th that I can honestly remember. So hoping that in 2023, I can <laughs> step up my game a bit and play more video games. Um, looking to play the Mass Effect trilogy, of course, and I've also got Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes to get through as well, so hopefully I'll be able to, to pump out some games in early 2023 and uh, have a better year than I did in 2022. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, this has been For The Record, I'll see you in the next video.